Hey there. In this video, we're diving into managing many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI. Have you run into issues like duplicate data or circular references before? Well, these kind of issues can pop up when two tables you're trying to relate have repeating values. Now, I'll show you how to work with the directionality of filters and when and when not to use many-to-many -many relationships. So the goal here is to make your data model stay clean and efficient. Let's make sure your Power BI relationships are working for you and not against you. So recently, I participated in the Learn with the Nerds data modeling event hosted by Pragmatic Works, and we briefly touched on working with many-to-many -many relationships, but I wanted to just kind of expand a little bit on this topic. And if you haven't seen that event, make sure you check it out. There's all kinds of great data modeling techniques discussed there. Now, one of the reasons why this wasn't really expanded upon in the Learn with the Nerds event is because oftentimes when it comes to working with training and learning aspects, there's a lot of ideal scenarios that pop up. And sometimes that's not entirely realistic for the real world practices that kind of go on. All the time I run into issues when I work with customers that we have to deal with many to many relationships. Virtual mentoring is something that I take a lot of pride in. It is something that I do at Pragmatic Works. It's essentially people could book time on my calendar and help get them unblocked from whatever they're work working on in 30 minutes to two hour increments. But basically a very common issue I run into all the time is a many-to-many -many relationship popping up. Well, why is it there? Should we avoid it? Should we not use it? Should we use it? Should we modify how it's working? It is a very real world problem that comes up all the time. So I really am passionate about this topic. This is something that I really wanted to uh, go out there and talk about. So let's jump into Power BI and check out our data model that's gonna be working with a many-to-many -many relationship in a more real world type scenario. So here we are, we're in Power BI. This is a data model that I have. It's essentially two separate examples in one. But basically we have a geography table, as you can see on the left side, which is then related to a customer table. And these are both dimensions. And then the customer table is related to the internet sales table, which essentially we can uh, filter down our internet sales table by customer, which inherits the geography aspect uh, from the geography table to say, all right, well, where is the customer located that purchased this item? This is a very standard type of way uh, to looking at this. This still uses a one to many relationship all the way down in a very normal type of scenario. But we don't always have something like a customer table in the real world. Now, this is a very real problem. There isn't always a table to kind of sync these things together. So on the right side, you can see I have another dim geography table, aptly names many to many. And this one, uh, there is no kind of customer table that's gonna be used in the middle to relate directly to internet sales. You know, for whatever reason in the real world, I don't have that. And all I have is this ge geographical location table. So let's take, a, let's take a look at the contents of these tables. So if we look at the dim geography table, the one that is related to the customer table, you can see it's just, a, it's got a geography key, cities, uh, state province code, province name, country region, country name, etc. And the mini to mini one is pretty much exactly the same. Then we have the fact internet, or then we have the customer table rather. And in the customer table, there's a geography key that the dim geography table is related to. And then the customer key is then what relates to the fact internet sales table based on customer key right here. So then we also have all the way on the right side, if I scroll over here, I also have this country region code column. This country region code does contain uh, all the different countries of which someone uh, or a item was purchased in. And this is kind of separate. I uh, made this column in here to show the example of what we're gonna be going through today. So let's take a look at how these, this relationship currently functions. So if I wanted to build a relationship directly from the dim geography named Dominion to Mini, I would build it on country region code because there is no geography key that exists inside the fact internet sales table to relate it there. So, but there is a country region code that I could build the relationship off of. And when I try to do that, if I drag country region code to country region code to match all the different countries together, it pops up this new relationship window and you can see that it's automatically creating this cardinality of many to many. 
Now there's a little error. It's kind of more of a warning at the bo bottom. It actually doesn't prevent you from making this relationship, which is kind of the whole reason why we started doing this video is this little functionality that we have. Now this is a relatively newer functionality. It used to just completely stop you in the past to build relationships this way. Now it actually lets you do it even though it has that many to many issue here. Anyways, if I go ahead and hit save, now we can see that there are many country regions applied to many different country regions in the internet sales table. All right, so that is creating this natural many to many relationship. And there are a couple pieces of iconography that I wanna point out. So first, as you can see that there is this arrow that's pointing in both directions from the fact internet sales table to the ge dim geography table. Now, the reason why that's happening is because when we built this relationship, we didn't specify a directionality that we want this geography table to filter down internet sales or internet sales to filter down geography or just let them both freely go about themselves. And that's exactly what's going on here. So both tables are accepting filters from the other. Now it is a best practice to use as few bi-directional relationships in your data model as possible. Now this does, the reason why is because this does create what's called data ambiguity. Now, it's not always a problem. The problem with data ambiguity and bidirectional relationships is that there, there can be a problem and it's very unpredictable in this nature. And what happens is they, it, your table starts collecting uh, filters and accepting filters from multiple different paths that could potentially conflict each other. Sometimes you get more numbers than you expect. Sometimes you get fewer numbers than you expect. Sometimes you do get exact results and it is very unpredictable in its nature and bidirectional relationships do cause this problem. So we try to avoid using bidirectional relationships as much as possible. And then the other piece of iconography I want to talk about is the star to star. Star to star is indicating many to many. It is a wild card to a wild card, any number to any number. And then lastly, uh, in this relationship, if you look closely, there's a little gap between the star and the line on either side here. And this little gap is very, very specific in its nature. Now, this is gonna get a little in the weeds on this part, is basically, when you have see these little gaps here, is one of two things that is causing it. One, you're in a composite model using multiple different connection types, such as import and direct query. That is not the case here. We don't have a composite model. What we do have though, what is the second scenario that could cause this little gap in the line is when you're using a many to many relationship. Now the iconography is simply letting us know that it is what's called a limited relationship. Now a limited relationship has most functionalities available, but essentially what it's saying is it does not allow table expansion. Now, again, this is a little bit, you know, in the weeds, a little bit on the explanation here, but essentially when you're using relationships between tables, what happens is there's a virtual table merge that happens in the background all the time. Every one of these relationships that are in place, there's a virtual table merge that happens in the background at the time of calculation when you go to visualize something and they use fields for multiple different tables. It does table merges and joins and whatnot. And the typical nature of a one to many relationship, not many to many, one to many is a left outer join from the many side to the one side. When you have a limited relationship, such as displayed on screen right now, it does not do table expansion. What table expansion means is that it doesn't account for any blanks. So like a left outer join would say, let's say you're, you have a fact table with countries that are there that does not exist in the actual dimension table. It would make a blank record for that. It is a blank there. Now in the geography table, on the other hand, that the geography many to many that we have here, there are gonna be some blanks, but they're not gonna populate. When you have a limited relationship, it only does an inner join. We're only matching records. Therefore, it still causes a level of data ambiguity at the total row level. Now, I'm gonna expand upon that in a moment, but basically, when you see a regular one-to-many relationship, there's no gaps, it is not a limited relationship, it does a left outer join as a virtual table, and then the other one, which is the gap, the limited relationship, it does inner 
inner joins on that table. And let me show you exactly what I mean. What is the exact happening going on when you're using an inner join? So this is what it looks like. If we're in the report view here, this is the two different, uh, two different geography tables, country columns utilized from each one of them. The one that's utilizing the one to many relationship, as you can see, if I click on it and then go over to my column section, you can see that it's using the regular dim geography table. And then it's using just a simple sum of sales amount from the fact internet sales table. And then if I look at the many to many table that I have on screen, the country is from dim geography, many to many, and sum of sales amount from the fact internet sales table. What you can see is there's gonna be very, very similar looking data here. And the problem is, is there is incorrect total being displayed on the mini to mini uh, visual. As you can tell, there's a, a $264 that is currently being unaccounted for. What this is saying is that there are, have been sales in a country in the internet sales table. That country doesn't exist in the dimension table of dim geography. So it creates a blank record there because it does a left outer join. Now, the mini to mini table though, it did the same exact functionality, but it did an inner join and because it did an inner join in the virtual table in the background, it doesn't show that blank record and it will not show that blank record. But regardless how the total row works in these visualizations, it doesn't care which country is looking at it. It says for, you know, imagine that this country is not a filter whatsoever. What is our total sales? And that's what's displayed on screen. And that is an incorrect total compared to what's there. So this is one issue when using mini to mini, there is a way to fix it, but this goes back all the way back to best practices. Okay. So when we are talking about working with data modeling is it best practice to set up one to many relationships where possible. It's not always possible, it's not always feasible, it's not always the best way to do it. But the more work you put into your data model making stuff like one-to-many relationships and really focusing on that star schema methodology as much as possible, then it makes your life easier, it makes your DAX easier, so on and so forth. Now we're using this many-to-many -many relationship because it's what we have, it's realistic, it's something that we just have to use as an example here, and we need to make it work. And it is currently not working. So how would I fix this at this point? So basically there's a few ways. Uh, one of which, if I look at my one to many, let's start on this side, how would I fix the one to many side of things? Well, I could simply click on the one to many. I could go to my filters on this visual. I could drill open country, select all and unselect blank. And there we go. Now, if I don't want to see the, the countries that's there, I can do that. But what if I do want to see the country that's there? Maybe, maybe I do want to see the blank. You know, maybe I do want to see the blank and it is a blank is a still a valid field because it's part of our total sales. It kind of depends, but it does resolve that problem. If I look at the mini to mini table and try to do that same thing, if I drill open country, there is no option for deselecting blank here because it's not blank isn't registered. It's not part of the virtual table merge that happens at the time of calculation here. So I still need to make this work. So let's make a measure that does fix it. Now, this is not a DAX video. The purposes of it is not DAX, but it is showcasing that sometimes you do have to write DAX to account for issues. So a common way that I like to, when I have total records that aren't displaying uh, the proper amount due to a relationship issue such as this, there's several ways that I could solve this in DAX, but I'll show you how I would recommend doing it. So first and foremost, I do have this total sales measure that exists. Let me make this bigger so you can see. It is just a simple sum of that sales amount column. That's it. If I drop it in, it's gonna give me the same exact result. So it's the same exact thing here, okay? So I'm gonna make a new measure. And in this new measure, I am going to just call this like total sales. I'm just gonna call it fixed for the purposes of this video. So if I just do total sales, right? It's just going to give me as a reminder, build it kind of in pieces here, the same exact value as our regular sales amount. Okay. So what we're going to do instead is I am going to lead it with a calculate to modify the filter context. And basically the filter that I want to apply is I want to only calculate this where this country is currently displayed on screen. I only want to show the total sales of what is actually here. I don't want to see blanks. I don't want to see something that isn't going to populate. So to do that, 
I'm actually gonna start this off with a variable. Sorry for going a little out of order here, but I'm gonna start this off with a variable and I'm gonna call this countries. And you know, if you wanna learn more about variables and DAX and what everything that's going on here, make sure you check out some of our other DAX videos, but I'm gonna kind of lead through here as if you know what I'm doing. And I am going to use a summarize function. The summarize function creates a basically a virtual table that exists within the current filter context. So I'm going to summarize our dim geography mini to mini table. And I only want to summarize based off the country column, which is, oop, not that one. This one right here. So basically I've created a virtual table and a variable that is just a summarized version in filter context of the countries that are currently being displayed on screen. That's all it is. And I'm gonna use this variable as a filter in my calculate function. And then I'm gonna use this, uh, let me format this, put it in currency type, uh, zero decimals. And if I add this to our visual now, our total sales fixed, it actually is returning the correct number. And I could quickly validate that easily. I could pull up a calculator on screen. And I could take this total value of 2936 minus that 264 blank that we see on the left side there. And it gives us 2672, which is roughly accurate. Remember, there's a lot of rounding that's kind of going on in this calculation here, but we can say that that's, that's accurate enough. Yeah, so that is, that is gonna be correct here. It's not showing values where they're blank. It's only showing it for the available countries that are currently in said filter context. So this looks good. But the only reason we had to do this is because our data model is imperfect. And in the real world, you're gonna have an imperfect data model sometimes. So it does help to know how to work with it. But all that being said, um, we have this relationship that's currently in place. And let's actually go back and look at the relationship itself one more time here. And remember, we have this bi-directional relationship in place. As I mentioned earlier, not a best practice. Let's also go ahead and modify this relationship to make sure we don't run into data ambiguity problems in the future. Again, they can be very unpredictable in their nature, when they're going to happen and what they're actually going to do. So I'm going to open up this relationship, go down here to cross filter direction. There's a really cool functionality here in Power BI where we can modify the directionality of this relationship. So the default nature was both in a mini to mini. I can actually specifically say, I want the factor in its sales to filter down dim geography, or I can specifically want the dim geography to filter down back internet sales. And that is the one that I want to use, this second one here. I want to use dim geography as a dimension table, so therefore it wants to filter down the fact internet sales. Now I can hit save, and we can see our iconography does change. The arrow direction changes, it's no longer going both directions, Dim geography is filtering down the fact internet sales and it is a good dimensional table that we have here. I still had the limited table relationship because, or the limited relationship type because it still is a limited relationship. It's many to many and it's many to many. So you're still gonna see those stars there because that's what it is. But at the very least it works and it's realistic and we, have, we are returning correct results now. So if that's the goal of this, get the kind of direct results here when possible. So guys, if you thought this is really cool, seeing this kind of realistic stuff happen, and you really want to say, you know what, I could really use help with this, check out virtual mentoring that we have available on our learnings platform, and you'll be able to check out how that works and how you can perhaps purchase some of that time that you could book on our calendars. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you watch the Data Modeling Learn with the Nerds video that was released on our YouTube. It is an amazing video. It is completely free. It covers a very wide range of topics that you know is helpful to absolutely everybody that's working in the Power BI space. If you have any type of issue like this that you've come up in the past, let me know. If you've had any relationship issues that you wanna talk about, post it in the comments below and I'd be happy to talk about it. So thanks again for checking out this video, guys. It was a lot of fun. This is a topic I'm very passionate about. My name is Nick Lee from Pragmatic Works, and I'll see you next time.